I think growing up in the Western Cape, um, in Cape Town, in a township, um, totally surrounded, I knew nothing except what I saw around me. The first time I made a trip out of, you know, the, the township, then I realized there's suddenly something wrong, really wrong with the setting. You know, when you get to a suburb, you see these leaves, you see these trees, you see these big houses, you see this peace, you see this tranquility, as opposed to seeing the squalor, the, the poverty. And I began to say, okay, how does, how does one make sense of this? This is 1995. So this is during the euphoria of, wow, you know, it's a new South Africa. We, Nelson Mandela is now our president. We can, we're all excited. We are, we are one people, one nation. My wife and I are driving towards um, Weinberg. Now my wife would be this kind of person that would have been classified as a colored in the old days. And uh, so we're driving down, and I, as I was driving, I realized that there was this vehicle kind of following us. And then after about 10 minutes of, you know, so the siren went, and then blue lights came, and then these two um, policemen, very big guys, guys bigger than me, I mean, with big muscles and white, obviously. They had the audacity of apologizing to my wife. She says, well, I just want to apologize. Sorry, madam. And they were very polite to her. You know, we just want to search, you know, um, this chap. And literally, guns were thrown out. I was frisked. I don't know what they were looking for. And meanwhile, my wife screaming, no, 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 don't do this. No, blah, blah. You know, or it does happen even today when, you know, you go to, to the shops. Um, together with my wife, you go to the malls. I will be the one who will be followed. They, you know, quickly, shopkeepers will say, can we help you, sir? You know, um, and then, you know, or even if going for coffee, it is assumed that she will be paying. You do get a sense sometimes that you're being overlooked, that you don't exist, you know, necessarily in the room. That's, that's how painful uh, it be does become sometimes with, with racism, uh, you know, at work. And you do get a sense that, you know, you're, you're not being recognized. And one is supposed to get used to it, but I can't. I mean, it's, it's just... It's just, you, you just don't get used to it at all. I was kind of visiting a friend in a hospital, and one of the things that really gave me a sense of hope was, here we had this white couple um, that came to me and said, hi, sorry, doctor, Which, can you help us with this? Immediately, what flashed my head at that point was the feeling that, um, you know, things have changed in this country to an extent. I know in the past, if you went to a hospital, in Hroteskir Hospital, and you see a black person, you would have assumed, nah, this person is probably one of the cleaners, etc. But to be mistaken for a doctor gave me the hope that a paradigm shift has happened in the minds and hearts of many of our South Africans. I think the other positive for me would have been <coughs> um, the sense in which um, somebody comes to me and says, teach me something. Just the sense that I, um, I can have very close friends, very close, I mean, my close friends are people who have abandoned their own upbringing in order to get close to me. And similarly, where I had to abandon my own upbringing in order to get close to them. So the true sense of reconciliation where this has happened, for me, that's been the greatest joy of my life. We thought that 1994 was the cutoff. So we've done that now. You know, we live in a new South Africa now. Um, we've got a new government and that sort of thing. But actually, the realities of, uh, of people living in the townships, those are still real. And the disparities are still there. Schools are different. So we've gotten rid of the sort of blatant, you know, sort of racism, legislated and everything else, which is fine. But I think what's remaining now is how do we deal with the racism in the hearts of people? And, and, and much of it has got to do with fear. What's left for me 
uh, what's left for those who are privileged. The fear is if you change you know, the dynamics in South Africa, if you change government, there's always this fear of, am I going to be a victim now? You know, am I going to be a victim of, is, to what extent are you taking something away from, from me? And the church is probably the only institution that is able to work out the communities that God is looking for. So the more we plant churches, the better, actually. So there's, there's still some work to be done in that area. It's, it's going to require guts. It's going to require discomfort um, in order to, to tackle um, you know, issues of race and racism. We, 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 we can't just sort of avoid that. The good news is that we, we do have a, a blueprint and it's called the Bible. The Bible shows us how to. And all that we need to do for, for us is to open ourselves up and say, hear my Lord, show me, uh, help me. And sometimes it starts with, with little steps like, um, help, help me, let's do the, just the basics. You know, that we don't have to read book, big, big books or find theories. It's just the basics like, help me to befriend somebody, help me to get involved in a project that will help transform other people's lives, help me to, you know, um, to do the little that I can do. Um, it's just the simple things. There's, there are no theories.